All right, how is everybody? Great! Good? Yay! Great right. team! Great, great. All right, I'm going to be doing some comedy and stuff, some stand and stuff. Uh, my name's Adam. Hi. For those of you who don't know me, I'm going to do a little introductory thing. I am not like a technical person. Like, despite the gadgets I have here, I am just bad at things. Uh, my car up here is the one with the different door and the bump hood. None of that was me, but I am not able to fix it. Um, I had this problem this winter where my car wouldn't start. It was just not turning over. So I looked at it, and um, one thing I noticed that was out of place was a piece of wood stuck between the battery and like the wall of the thing that holds the battery. And I was like, is that it? But is, is it like causing a problem? Maybe it's broken. Maybe battery wood is a thing that's wrong with my car. I need to replace my battery wood. And I know I, know, I, know I can Google this and figure it out, but I, because I don't want to go into like you, like an auto place and ask the guy, hey, my battery wood is broke. Because there's two possibilities. One possibility, the more likely one, is that it doesn't exist and I'm an idiot. The other possibility is it exists and everyone knows about it and there's a sale on it and it's right behind me and it's nine dollars and it will fix my car and make my oil better and make my gas mileage like that those are the two possibilities i am just not good and i have this weird anxiety about uh knowledge and stuff i just i have anxieties and i have fears i have actual fears i have two actual fears and phobias that i know the origins to right First one's flying. I'm afraid of flying, which is weird because like my dad is a pilot, and we used to watch like those box like greatest airplane explosions. <laughs> and my dad would do like a play by play of like, well, you see, he shouldn't have stalled. Like that's where he And I would just see fiery death. And he tried like he tried to cure me of this, and because he was not only a pilot, he was a mechanic. Airplanes was his whole life. And so he took me on like his yearly uh, uh, maintenance check of his airplane. He had a 1966 Cessna 150. And you know how people take good care of like classic cars from the 60s? Not very popular with airplanes. And a Cessna 150 is like a lawnmower with the blade pointing forward. And it's like, he's like, I'll explain to you how all of this works and you will never be afraid of it again. And it's like, see this thin metal that holds the fuel tank from outside? There's no hole in it. Like, but it's like a bicycle, like bicycle metal. Yeah. Anywho, here's the tail. The tail is this hollow cone with these cables, like brake cables on a bicycle. Planes and bicycles have a lot in common. <laughs> and he's like, it's like loose, like a stand-up jazz violinist's like biggest chord, you know, the deep one. And he's blum. And he's like, fine. <laughs> what if that snaps? He's like, well then. Uh, have to fly with the other parts. <laughs> that didn't work. That didn't work. And that's like a childhood fear. Like that started in like the phase of young memory, the airplane show and the maintenance thing. I was like eighth grade. I was like eight when that happened and the plane seemed like an eight-year-old science fair project, which I knew is not something I wanted to base my life on. Uh, but yeah, the other fear I have, and this is a little gross, it's going to get a little blue. I apologize. I am afraid of Definitely afraid of it. I do not like poop at all, okay? And this happened because when I was like 22, we went to a rock concert, me and a bunch of friends. We stayed in a Winnebago near like the porta potties a half mile from the real toilets. And I was reading a book because I'm not a rock concert guy. And, and there's, there's these guys playing frisbee on a hill above the Port of Johns. And I just hear the, like a thunk and a wet splash and what sounds like a pig trapped in like a garbage can just like squealing and it's the worst thing I've ever heard and I just look and it is what I think it is and I, I just turn around and I'm not afraid immediately it just waits but these things bury deep in your mind and they pop out like cicadas right <laughs> like two years later I am just like using all of the toilet paper <laughs> That's that one. I don't know. I I don't have a good segue here. <laughs> I used to, but then I put that bit in. I put, I, that's a new bit, and I put that in, and I don't have a segue anymore. But I think, in my humble opinion, as a student of society, 
I think I give us as a whole, the human race, about a C minus. All of like oh, art generous. and music and love versus all the war and hate and genocides. I think we average out to about a C minus. And we are lucky that we don't know of any aliens throwing off the curve, right? This is just braided in a vacuum. Okay, because we'd be screwed, totally screwed, if we found aliens that like had race but no racism. We would be just, that would make us look terrible. We find a planet full of flarbs and there are blue flarbs and orange flarbs and we'd be like, hey, did you ever just kill all the orange flarbs for no reason? Like, no, God, why would we do that? That's horrible. <laughs> we would have to all agree on a big lie version of history to tell. <laughs> Everyone got along fine. <laughs> just to retain our C-minus status. <laughs> Maybe it's just, I, my own insecurities about things, about people, but like I am not good at certain things. I got fired from a job last year that I liked, where, uh, you know the football games at Purdue? They hire students because they don't have to pay them a lot to do things. <laughs> and the thing they hired me for was cabling for the Steadicam guy, this guy with this camera that runs around. Steadicamming, right? And my job is to let the cable out so he can run around and then pull it in so that I don't leave a lot of slack that cheerleaders or football players or mascots or the band can trip over, which there's a lot of people who can trip on. <laughs> so he, one day, a guy's coming in for a touchdown. And his job is to like do the touchdown woo cam. You know, the camera goes up to the guy and he's like, woo, that's his job. <laughs> my job is letting him do that job. And I did not do my job well that day. Because <laughs> I'm doing cable behind me, but I gotta keep the cable in front of me loose enough that I don't trip anybody. So the guy is coming in for a touchdown, and he turns, and the guy with the football is gonna run, but he's running through the end zone, touchdown's made. But I'm gonna trip him. I'm going to trip this guy that the school has invested all this money in, and he's invested his whole life on. I'm going to trip him because I'm like this kid in a t-shirt, and it's tight, and my man boobs are showing, and I'm flopping around, and then, of course, the Jumbotron's on it. Over this whole mess of that, I see myself on the Jumbotron. <laughs> and this guy is like a pure athletic specimen. He has worked harder on his body than I have worked at everything in my life combined. <laughs> okay? And then I'm here, and I look like a lava lamp. <laughs> and I'm going to trip, I'm going to ruin his whole life, his whole career. Everything's going to come to an end because I'll trip him and he'll tear his ACL and he'll have a drinking problem and Sports Illustrated will cover him in 30 years and it'll be sad and it'll be my fault. And then that picture of me with blah is going to be on like the page eight or something. I don't know. So while that's happening, I'm just hit with this searing red hot realization of all of this in like a quarter of a second. And he, I'm mean, at the cable, just, just that. It's nothing to him. It's nothing. He's worked so hard. It's, just, it's a cake. Come on. He's, he, I don't even think he noticed it. I think his brain just like pulled his foot over it and didn't bother to warn him about this. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. So. <laughs>